Hi, my name is Hank. I'm from Pennsylvania. I'm here checking out the studio. They got a lot of great stuff going on, and you should definitely become a premium subscriber to check out all the great content. This week on Miked Up, we'll be talking about evolution, creation, and the church's teaching on the natural sciences. Also, we'll be diving into the 1998 murder of Matthew Shepard. We'll break down the truth of what really happened that night. That's this Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Click on the link to check out the show page. God love you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Vorce. Too many folks in the church are simply willing to ignore the depth of the current crisis. That's just intellectually dishonest. But beyond that, their attitude is creating further problems with regard to evangelization. For every new convert to the church in the United States, four leave the faith. Of the roughly 68 million Catholics in America, 32 million, about half, no longer have any association with the church at all. That's 10% of the entire U.S. population. One out of every 10 Americans walking around is a former Catholic. How can anyone pretend this is just no big deal? It's not news some people want to hear, people who prefer to keep their heads in the sand, but it is what it is. All this week in the Vortex, we're going to be debuting the first five episodes of our all-new program, Dispatches, as in Dispatches Sent from the Front Lines of Battle. The first five episodes of our Dispatches program are subtitled The Demolition of the Faith and presenting clear terms, proof positive evidence of the destruction the faith has undergone in the United States for at least the past 50 years. Now for most of this past summer we've been here at the studios working on these episodes and this level of research, its depth and its scope about the life of the church in the United States has never been undertaken before. We scoured the official records of the Catholic Church in the United States going all the way back to the late 1700s. An authentic restoration of the faith can never happen as long as the reality of the crisis is not understood and admitted, as long as people keep their heads in the sand. And with that, we present to you the third episode of our all-new program, Dispatches, Part 3 of The Demolition of the Faith. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Hello everyone and welcome to our brand new show here at churchmilton.tv that we're calling Dispatches. This is the third of a five-part series that we're calling The Demolition of the Faith. I'm your host, Michael Voris. The last priest in America, that's a concept once unheard of and even today almost unimaginable, but it's fast becoming a very real possibility here in the States. In our previous episodes of Demolition of the Faith, we showed you how we acquired this data, discussing both the decline in morals and the numbers of laity, revealing the true devastation of Catholic education, and now we'll see what little remains of the dwindling fires of the Catholic Church in America, our priests and religious. Through their waning numbers, you're going to see why, and we're talking about priests and religious here, you're going to see why the concept of the last priest in America isn't that far-fetched. Much like a candle simply burning itself out, nothing dramatic or sudden that you can point to, the flame just continues to slowly dwindle until it just puffs out, poof, and with that in mind, we're now on to the diminished and diminishing numbers of the ambassadors of God. Our data is from this, the official Catholic directory. This one is from 2012, but it's also known as the Kennedy directory and the Kenneth C. Jones compilation of the Index of Leading Catholic Indicators, those two sources. We spent weeks going over all of these numbers, all of this data, and again, it's from the official Catholic directory. This book and they have one for every single year, and we went all the way back to 1785. This book is published by the United States bishops, so this is the official numbers from the church. Now, from the earliest days of the 20th century, the number of Catholic priests in America continued climbing. 
reaching its peak in 1967 and about 60,000 priests, just a tick under. In 2012, there's just a tick under 40,000. The total number of priests in America has decreased by 34% over the past 45 years. At current trends by 2020, in just a little more than six years, there will only be about 30,000 priests. And half of them, half of them will be 70 or older. And when we look at this issue, the age of the priest, you have to bear in mind that every life insurance company in America bases its entire business model on the fact that, on average, a man will be dead before he turns 76. So in less than 10 years, over half of those men should be dead, according to the law of averages by which insurance companies set their rates. Now, the rate of disappearing priests is going to increase in the coming six to 10 years. How do we know this? Well, there are no reinforcements on the way. Right now, there are more priests aged 80 to 84 than there are priests 30 to 34. Could these projections set the stage for the moment to arrive when we witness the last priest in America? Sure they could. First, let's look at all the factors behind such a dystopian scenario before we get into that. There are two types of priests, diocesan and religious. Diocesan are usually the priests in your parish, your normal you know, run-of-the-mill parish. Religious are those who belong to an order, like the Dominicans or the Jesuits, for example. Let's look at the numbers here. In 1969, diocesan priests were at a high of 37,000. And in 2012, their numbers have decreased by 30% to just 27,000. As for the religious priests, the priests in orders, they were at a high of 23,000 in 1980. In 2012, there were only 12,500 religious priests, a drop of 50% much faster rate of decline than among diocesan priests. Keep that stat in the back of your mind for right now. While we're on the subject of diocesan priests and religious priests, let's see how their respective seminaries are doing. In 1969 and 2012, the number of diocesan seminaries has declined from 137 to 71, a decrease of 50%. Half of all U.S. diocesan seminaries have been shuttered in the past two generations. And as for the actual seminarians who go to these seminaries that are now dwindling, their numbers explain why the seminaries have been closed. Back in 1966, things were looking pretty rosy, at least numbers-wise. There were nearly 18,000 men studying for the priesthood. Today, an epic loss, a little more than 3,000. 82% loss, and bear in mind, not all, not all of these 3,000 men currently studying will be ordained. Most, in fact, will not. In 1965, there were 479 religious seminaries. Those are the orders, like the Dominicans and Jesuits and so forth. 479 religious seminaries, and now there are only 98, a decrease of 80%. 1962 was the height of 22,500 students, seminarians, attending these religious seminaries. In 2012, those numbers have, well, simply fallen off the cliff from 22,000 religious seminarians to just 1,600, a demolition of 93%. You heard right. Men studying for the priesthood, for the religious and diocesan priesthood, has dropped more than 80%, that's for the diocesan and for religious orders, more than 90%. This decline in relig religious life is also reflected in other areas and vocations, such as brothers. Let's take a look. In 1967, the total amount of brothers in various religious orders was 12,500. And in 2012, it has gone down by 64% to a mere 4,500. From 12,500 to just 4,500. In 1966, 181,000 women religious were the backbone of the Catholic educational and health systems. In 2012, there were less than 55,000, a decline of 70%. And a very important piece of information here, their average age is 68. 
by 2020, that's just five and a half years from now, the number of sisters will decline another 15,000 to 40,000, a further slashing of a third from today's numbers. And of those, half will be 70 or older. Now, we've looked at the number of the decrease in the number of priests, nuns, brothers, and seminarians, as well as seminaries. But let's take one second look at the unprecedented decline of the orders. According to Kenneth C. Jones, the Jesuits, the Order of Franciscans Minor, the Christian Brothers, the Benedictines, the Redemptorists, the Dominicans, Mary Knoll, the Oblates of Mary Immaculate, the Vincentians, OFM Conventual, the Passionists, Holy Cross, the Augustinians, OFM Capuchin, Precious Blood, La Salette, the Carmelites, and Holy Ghost, every single order is massively contracting. The high point of these orders was in 1965. Their most recent numbers in the year 2000, however, show, a, show in most cases a rapid decline ranging from roughly 40% to upwards of, get this, 90%. We've shown the decline in the church's personnel. It's only fair we show what has become of the parishes that they staff here in the United States. In the 20 years between 1992 and 2012, there was a net decline in the number of parishes by 2,000, from 20,000 to 18,000. So this decline already accounts for any new parishes being built. It's already baked in there. This includes new parishes. You count them in, and we've still lost a net of 2,000. That's a drop of 10% in 20 years. But more telling, of those 2,000 parishes closed in the 20 years, 700 were closed in the first 10-year period from 92 to 2002, while 1,300 were closed in the second 10-year period from 2002 to 2012, the most recent time. The rate of closures is accelerating, and that is a very, very frightening omen. It means the demolition of the church in the United States is increasing, moving at a faster speed. Why are there so few religious these days? Well, the empirical data shows a correlation to the time of the Second Vatican Council in the early 1960s. But correlation doesn't necessarily mean cause. Does it have to do with Vatican II and the confusion, great confusion, that followed in the wake of the Council? that much of the church is still laboring under today? Well, for those who want to insist that the council is to blame, the numbers don't prove that. The numbers can't prove that one way or the other. But on the other hand, for those who want to defend the council as having nothing to do with this, it's all just very, it's a very hard case to make based on the correlation. The post-council confusion simply cannot be ruled out as a contributor to the decline in the church in the United States. So, why are we bringing up the last priest in America? Are the number of priests in the United States suffering that badly? Well, despite the increase of life expectancy in recent years, that is, despite that we live longer lives in this modern day world thanks to science than our ancestors did almost a century ago, the total number of priests in America could still be exhausted eventually. Why? because the number of new ordinations is at rock bottom, according again to the bishop's own numbers, the official Catholic directory right here. These are the bishop's numbers, folks, not ours. The number of newly ordained priests in the year 1992 was at 864. That has decreased by 50% to an all-time low, an all-time low of 438 priests in 2006. However, since then, the number has somewhat stabilized in the past six years, with approximately 470 to 480 priests on average being ordained each year. This, however, will not be enough to outweigh the number of priests that die or retire, or both, each year. Now, next, we'll look at a projection showing how many priests we have in the next 45 to 90 years. This projection is based on the annual net change in the number of priests each year between 1967 and 2012. Why 1967? Well, let's explain this to you. 1967 was the year we had the most priests in America. In 1967, there were 60,000 priests in the United States. In 2012, there were 40,000 priests. 
The average net change in those 45 years is in raw numbers, a net loss of 448 priests each year. And that's going to be our base number here. Now you're thinking, don't we get around 450 newly ordained priests each year? Wouldn't that stabilize the number of total priests? Nope. This net change of a loss of 448 priests each year includes the numbers of both those priests that die each year and the annual influx of newly ordained, according again to the official Catholic directory. In short, the new priests coming in are already baked into the overall number. So based on this average net change of the 45 years between 1967 and 2012, if we lose a net of 448 priests each year by 2057, 45 years from 2012, we could have only 19,000 priests remaining. Now, why project for 45 years into the future? Because we started counting from 45 years in the past, the high water mark for the number of priests. So we can say 45 years ago from now was when things were at their best in terms of the numbers. Where will things stand 45 years from now? In the past 45 year average decline, we suffered a net loss of roughly 20,000 priests, which, which means in 45 years, all things being equal, we could suffer another net loss of 20,000 more based on those trend lines. However, those trend lines only look at the raw numbers. They do not account for a more in-depth treatment of the numbers, specifically the average age of priests today. When you account for the age factor, the trend line accelerates as more and more priests die and are replaced by fewer and fewer younger priests. The trend is not static, it's changing. And there are some dioceses that may no longer have any more priests to serve. If this can begin to happen in a diocese here and there all over the United States, then it can certainly begin to happen in regions and eventually on a national scale. So, the church will either need to start combining dioceses, creating much larger geographical territories, or import priests from other nations, which of course has already been happening, which somewhat masks the devastation that's local here to the United States. Since it would require a great deal of resources to acquire a current age distribution chart that spanned for priests, that spans from 1967, the high point of the total number of priests in the U.S. to 2012, we can only estimate statistically how the age distribution will determine the net number of priests in the coming years. It certainly appears that the majority of priests today are 60 to 80 years of age. When these souls pass on, how many priests will there be left to take up their posts? It certainly appears the new crop of priests will be much smaller. There were 194 dioceses in 2012. How many will there be 45 years later in 2057? Well, the average annual net change, based again on the net change from 67 to 2012, projects there will be only about 19,000 priests in the entire country in 2057. The once bright candle of the Catholic Church in America is burning out, is dying out. If this continues to be the case 45 years after 2057, another 45 years, we will have suffered a net loss of more than 20,000 priests. A 20,000 priest net loss subtracted from the 19,000, which could mean, based on these numbers, and this doesn't even factor in the average age of priests today, the last priest in America could die in less than a century from now. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.